George, Greg, and Roy. Officially and formally, you are now called. You are called by name. You are called by God through the church. Why are you called? Because you are loved. Remember that. You are loved. And God wants to show even more His love for you. That is why He has chosen you to be deacons and in His time to be priests. What is your duty? What is your response to this call of love? Only two words. Be holy. The crisis of the church is really a crisis of holiness. And our people, the people of God, are confused, are lost, are angry because they have seen so much unholiness among those whom God has called. So George, Greg, and Roy, you have only one mission, to give God and the world saints. And those saints should be you. Do not look at other people. Do not look at other priests. Look at God. And as you look at God, keep on asking God, Lord, I just want to be like you. Do not allow the destruction of ministry. Do not allow the limelight. Do not allow the video and the photographers to distract you from your real focus, and that is God. How? The first step to holiness is prayer. And your best contribution to the world is to be praying deacons. George, Greg, and Roy, the liturgy of the hours beginning today for you is no longer an option. It is now an obligation. And every day, you must pray the invitatory until Salve Regina without fail. If you don't do it, you cheat yourself, you cheat the church, you cheat all of us. The liturgy of the hours, the breviary, is now an obligation. When you baptize, make sure you pray as you baptize. When you preach, make sure you pray before you preach, you pray after you preach. When you give recollections, pray with the people. When you give the benediction at the holy hour, be blessed by the Blessed Sacrament yourself. Do not allow grace to pass through you without touching you. Do not allow the grace of God to pass through you without affecting you. Because you are not only a pipeline, you must be changed by every blessing you give. You must be changed by every grace that you bestow. Pray. That is your first obligation. But you're going to tell me, what is the fruit of prayer? Some of us in the church pray, but that is all. If you pray and there is no effect in your life, as Pope Francis said, you might be praying to the devil. What is the sign that you are praying to God? 
the sign that you're praying to God and God is accepting your prayer and God responds to your prayer is a life of penance. A life of sacrifice. Celibacy, my dear brothers, I tell you, is going to be a sacrifice. A life of sacrifice tells you that your vocation is not only to bring the mercy of God for others. Your vocation is to take upon yourself the sins of the world and carry in your conscience, carry in your shoulders, carry in your being the sins of mankind. Because you are not different from them. My brothers, kung bulok ang simbahan, mas bulok ang kaparian. Pero kahit sa kabulukan natin, kahit sa kapangitan natin, maganda pa rin tayo sapagkat mahal tayo ng Diyos. Roy, Greg, and George, we are a bunch of rotten apples and oranges. But we are beautiful. We have been blackened by sin from childhood until now. And God knows that you will still sin after ordination. But you are beautiful because God has made you beautiful. That is why we will dress you with beautiful vestments because God is your vestment. God is your attire. Your dalmatic was not made by human hands. Your dalmatic is only a symbol of the beauty that God has given you. Pray, and the fruit of real prayer is a life of penance, a life of sacrifice. Because if prayer does not lead you to sacrifice, if prayer does not lead you to self-discipline, if prayer does not lead you to asceticism, you might be praying to yourself. It might be just a soliloquy. You might be just talking to yourself. Your retreat journal might be filling up, but you might just be writing poems and songs. Not God at work in your life. Make sure you go to confession once a month. Make sure you don't pass a day without even one bit of sacrifice. Make sure, my dear brothers, that as you sacrifice, you say thank you, Lord, for every opportunity of penance, of asceticism. And be generous with penance. Be generous to say no because you have given God your yes. And believe me, my brothers, if you open yourself to a life of penance beginning now until your last breath, you're going to build character. You're going to build depth of spirituality. And you will closer to God so that God may be like you. But what is the sign that your penance is not a, an exercise of desperation, of discouragement, of hopelessness, of pessimism. The sign that your penance is on the right track is that you have become more loving, cheerfully loving, gladly serving, without complaint, not grudgingly, but with willingness, serving the Lord with joy. That is why the first task of the deacons after praying, after penance, is giving bread to the poor, the widows, and the orphans. Your mission is a mission of charity. Let people know you as Roy the Charitable, Greg the Charitable, George the Charitable, because the poor who extend their arms to you for alms will be the same poor who will bring you to heaven. If you ignore them, you will get lost. If you ignore them, 
you might forget that once upon a time and until now, you are poor. Three things, my dear brothers. Pray, penance, charity. The fruit of real prayer is love. The fruit of real penance is love. And at the sunset of our lives, the Lord who called you and told you, I love you, will be the same Lord who will ask you, did you love as I have loved you? Your vocation is love. Through prayer, through penance. My brothers, it is an awesome task to be a deacon. In God's time, I hope to ordain you priests. But you do not lose your diaconate. You are deacons for life. You are servants for life. And your vocation is to pray, sacrifice in penance, and to live loving everybody. My dear people of God, it is a great step that they are taking and they need your prayers. All seminarians approach ordination with an excited, thrilled, generous heart. But somewhere along the way, we get distracted. Why, you will ask me? I will challenge you. Because some of you, my dear people, love us the wrong way. Do not spoil your priests. Give your priests a chance to suffer. That is why we were called. We were not called to live a life of comfort and ease. We were called to live embracing the cross. Give us a chance. Do not spoil us. Do not pamper us. Give us a chance to follow the Lord. Help your priests. Help these deacons. They are blessings for the church. They are our gifts to the Lord. Craig, George, Roy, thank the Lord. He calls you now. He tells you, I love you. The church loves you. Your brother priests and I love you. Your only vocation is to love. 